Hello friends, I welcome you back for the second topic about artificial intelligence series. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to invite your friends, your fellow students, your neighbors to also get this opportunity to learn about artificial intelligence. My name is Lubinga Hudson from Uganda. My email is there, you can contact me, you can ask any question, feel free to comment, and please make sure that you take time to listen and understand what we are studying. Today's topic is about agents in AI, agents in artificial intelligence. This is what we are going to cover. Agents, intelligent agents, agents and environment, structure and agents, and then the types of agents. Let's talk about agents. As we said, we can define AI as a study of rational agents. What's a rational agent? A rational agent could be anything which makes decisions as a person, farm, machine, or software. It carries out an action with the best outcome after considering past and current percepts. And these percepts are the agent's perceptual inputs at a given instance. An AI system is composed of an agent and its environment. The agents act in their environment, and the environment may contain other agents. So an agent is anything that can be, uh, that can be viewed as, one, perceiving its environment through sensors and perceiving uh, and acting upon that environment through actuators. So we are saying that an agent is anything that can be viewed as one, perceiving its environment through sensors and then acting upon that environment through actuators. Now, when you talk about these sensors, and actuators are the two main components that the agent will use. Uh, we shall explore them as we continue in this lecture. Now, perceiving simply means observing or not seeing or seeing or recognizing. That's what we mean by the agent perceiving the environment Okay, that's what I mean by an agent. Remember, we are talking about agents in AI. Not this. Uh, every agent can perceive its own actions. It can recognize, it can uh, observe or notice its own actions. But not always the effects, the effects that are as a result of its actions may not always be perceived by the agent. So in this diagram, we are trying to illustrate an AI agent. So as we said, an agent has two main components, the sensors and the actuators. And then it uses these two to deal with the environment. So these sensors are like the eyes. If we are comparing an agent to the human being, the sensors are like the eyes, the ears, and they help, they, are, they help this agent to perceive the environment. In other words, they help it to observe, to see, to recognize, or to notice the environment. And the actuators are more or less like 
uh, the components that make uh, that enable it to make actions they help it to act upon this environment so to a human being you can compare them with the hands but to be more specific uh, in terms of computing these are like the speakers the screens and now the sensors are like the microphones or the cameras okay so that's an agent let's talk about intelligent agents we have already seen what an agent is but now we are gonna look at intelligent agents now an intelligent agent is a program that can make decisions or perform a service based on its environment under input and experiences uh, these programs can be used to autonom uh, these programs can be used to autonomously or separately gather information on a regular on a programmed uh, schedule or when prompted by the user in real time intelligent agents may also be referred to as a boat or a robot so this bot is short for a robot typically an agent program using the parameters the user has provided such as all or some part of the internet gathers information the user is interested in and then presents that information to them on a periodic or the requested basis so data intelligent agents can actually extract any specifiable information such as included keywords or public date in agents that employ artificial intelligence the user input is collected using the sensors as we said like microphone or cameras and the agent output is delivered through actuators like the speakers or the screens the practice of having information brought to a user by an agent is what we call the push technology i repeat push technology we are simply talking about the practice of having information brought to a user by an agent the common characteristics of intelligent agents are adaptation based on experience, real-time problem solving, analysis of error, all success rates, and the use of memory-based storage and retrieval. For enterprises, intelligent agents can be used for applications in data mining, data analytics, and customer service and support the CSS. Uh, consumers can also use intelligent agents to compare the prices of similar products and then notify the user when a website update occurs. More so, intelligent agents are also similar to software agents and which software agents are autonomous computer programs so in brief that's what we mean by intelligent agents let's talk about the agents and environment an ai system is composed of an agent and its environment so the system because we know any system is a combination of several elements so a system is composed of several components or elements now the AI system is composed of one the agent and two its environment 
the agents act in their environment and the environment may contain other agents. Let's talk about, let's see the nature of environments. Some programs operate in the entire artificial environment confined to keyboard input, database, computer file systems, and character output on a screen. In contrast, some software agents, or we can call them software robots, or simply soft bots, they do exist in reach, or they are in unlimited domains. The simulator for AI has a very detailed, complex environment and the software agent needs to choose from a long array of actions in real time. A soft bot designed to scan the online preferences of the customer and show interesting items to the customer works in the real as well as an artificial environment. The most famous artificial environment is the Turing test environment. We are gonna talk about the Turing test environment in detail. And in this Turing test environment, we have one real agent, we have uh, one real and other artificial agents that are tested on equal ground. So this is a very challenging environment because it's highly difficult for a software agent to perform as well as a human. So the environment may be real, may be artificial, complex, very detailed. It depends. But the most famous uh, environment, uh, the most famous artificial environment is the Turing test environment. So let's try to understand what the Turing test environment is and how it works. Now, my friends, the success of an intelligent behavior of a system can be measured using or with the Turing test. What is this Turing test? Two persons and a machine are evaluated to part and they participate in a test. Out of the two persons, one plays the role of the tester. So these are the two persons. We have this tester, the interrogator, which we are calling player C, and then we have another person, the human responder, the player B, who is tested, who is interrogated. And this human is given the same questions as the computer, which is prayer A. So this is not uh, natural, but this is a natural agent, a human being, a human responder, but this is a computer, prayer A and prayer B. They are both given the same test. So this interrogator will give the same questions to these two, and then they will give answers or they respond to the questions. Now, in this test, each of them, the respondents, sits in different rooms and the tester is unaware. This interrogator here is unaware of who is the machine and who is the human. So the interrogator doesn't know whether the human is this one or this one. And these two sit in different rooms. Okay, now this interrogator goes ahead to interrogate the questions by typing and sending them to both intelligences to which he will receive the responses. This test aims at fooling the tester. How? This tester is fooled. If the tester fails, because the tester doesn't know who the human is, 
who the uh, the computer is now if the tester fails to determine the machine's response from the human response then the machine is said to be intelligent so this is how they uh, the Turing test works the interrogator is full doesn't know who the human is and who the computer is according to the responses if he cannot determine who the human is and who the computer is then that automatically shows that this computer is intelligent so that's how the Turing test works okay let's talk about the properties of environment the properties of the environment the environment can be discrete or continuous what does this mean if there are a limited number of distinct clearly defined states of the environment then the environment is discrete for example in the case of the chess game otherwise it is continuous for example for the case of driving then another property is that the environment can be observable or partially observable if it is possible to determine the complete state of the environment at each time from the percepts then it is observable otherwise it is only partially observable three it can be static or dynamic if the environment does not change while the agent is acting then it is static otherwise it's dynamic and next it can the environment can have a single agent or multiple agents so there can be one agent or other agents which may be of the same or different kind as that of the agent it can be accessible or inaccessible if the agent's sensory apparatus can have access to the complete state of the environment then the environment is accessible to that environment and vice versa most so the environment can be deterministic or non-deterministic if the next state of the environment is completely determined by the current state and the actions of the agent then the environment is deterministic otherwise it's non-deterministic and lastly it can be episodic or non-episodic in an episodic environment each episode consists of the agent perceiving and then acting the quality of its action depends just on the episode itself the subsequent episodes do not depend on the actions in the previous episodes so episodic environments are much simpler because the agent does not need to think ahead okay let's now look at the structure of intelligent agents to understand the structure of intelligent agents we should be familiar with the architecture and the agent program what's the architecture this is the machinery that the agent executes on it's a device with sensors and actuators for example a robotic car a camera or a pc what about an agent program this is an implementation of an agent function an agent function is simply a map from the percept sequence so the implementation of that map is what we are calling the agent program and this percept sequence simply means the history of all that an agent has perceived till the date to an action okay so in simple terms we are saying that the agent 
is made up of the architecture and the agent program. That's the structure uh, of intelligent agents. Let's talk about the examples of agents. We have a software agent, a human agent, and a robotic agent. Let me try to throw more light on each of these. A software agent has keystrokes, file contents, received network packages, which act as sensors and displays on the screen. Okay, what about human agents? These have eyes, ears, and other organs which act as sensors and hands, legs, mouth, and other body parts act as actuators. Then a robotic agent has cameras and infrared rangefinders which act as sensors and then various motors acting motors okay motors motors acting as actuators okay this illustration tries to show that this is an agent it is trying to show the structure we have the agent and then using the actuators it will make actions on the environment and the agent still can get the uh, percepts from the environment, these observations, or the past experiences, the history. And then the agent has abilities. It can perform, uh, it has goals to achieve, and it can choose preferences depending on the conditional rules, we shall talk about them as we continue. And the agent can even have, uh, the agents can have prior knowledge about the percepts to help uh, them decide so that they uh, act upon the environment. Okay, let's talk about the types of agents. Agents can be grouped in four classes based on their degree of perceived intelligence and capability. We have simple reflex agents, model-based reflex agents, goal-based reflex agents, utility agents, and then the learning agent. And I think by the, uh, by the time I finish explaining all this, it will mark the end of this topic. Okay, we are going to look at one by one. Let's begin with the simple reflex agents. Now, simple reflex agents ignore the rest of the percept history and act only, and act only on the basis of the current percept. They ignore the percept history. They are only dealing with the current percept. Percept history simply means the history of all that an agent has perceived till date. So the agent function is based on a condition action rule. What does this mean? The condition action rule is just a rule that maps a state, for example, a condition to an action. If the condition is true, then the action is taken, else not. This agent, the simple reflex agent, uh, the agent function only succeeds when the environment is fully observable. So for a simple reflex agent, it's Agent function will only succeed if the environment is uh, the environment is fully observable. So for these agents, the simple reflex agents, uh, if they are in partially observable environments, they can 
easily go into infinite loops so they may be unavoidable and they may, it is possible that they can escape these infinite loops if the the agent can give random actions so if they can randomize their actions then they can escape these loops so this is a simple reflex agent as i've said for it it uh, looks at the current situation for example here we have a question what the world what is the uh, the world is right now that's the current situation so it uses its sensors to perceive the environment and when it gets these percepts it uses the condition action rules remember i have already said that the condition action rule is a rule that maps a state in other words it maps a condition to an action so using these rules that are already said it can decide an action to do and depending on the kind of action it decides it will use the actuators to perform or to act upon the environment to perform those actions so for it it doesn't take a note of the previous history the previous percepts it will ignore them and it will only deal with the current percept so that's a simple reflex agent now you can easily note that it has problems one it has very limited intelligence cause it doesn't take care of the history it only looks at the current uh, percept and then decides there and then so it is it has very limited intelligence number two another problem with it is that there is no knowledge of non perceptual parts of state and number three usually too big to generate and store and then lastly if there occurs any change in the environment then the collection of rules needs to be updated so in the case there are changes in the environment these conditional rules as a must they have to be updated okay let's now talk about the model based reflex agents unlike the simple reflex agents these work by finding a rule whose condition matches the current situation so the other one just looks at the current condition and it decides an action to take basing on the condition rules but now the model based reflex agents they work by finding a rule whose condition matches the current situation a model based agent can handle partially observable environments by use of model about the world whereas as you have noted the simple reflex agents they only work for uh, the when the environment is wholly observable is fully observable not partially now these model based reflex agents keep track of the internal state which is adjusted by each percept and that depends on the percept history so this is a model based reflex agent what the world is like now so it uses the sensors to receive to observe the environment to receive the percepts and now this time around this agent keeps track of the internal state and this is adjusted uh, by each percept and that depends on the percept history so each percept it gets the state of how the agent looks at the world will be changed so the world keeps on evolving 
depending on the percepts the world what how this agent sees the world keeps on changing it keeps on evolving depending on the percepts it receives and then it must decide what actions to do then after which in order to still take the action by means of the actuators it uses the condition action rules so that's the difference between the model based reflex agents and the simple reflex agents so that current state which is stored inside the agent uh, maintains some kind of structure describing the part of the world which cannot be seen now updating requires information about how the world evolves independently from the agent and how the agent affects the world so in brief that's the model based reflex agents now another type of agent is called the goal based agent this kind of agents take decision based on how far they are currently from their goal how far they are currently from their goals that's how they take their decisions their every action is intended to reduce its distance from the goal and this allows the agent uh, a way to choose among multiple possibilities selecting the one which reaches a goal state so these agents have the knowledge which knowledge supports their decisions and this knowledge is represented explicitly and can be modified and this makes these agents more flexible in other words these agents usually require search and planning so these goal based agents they have a behavior that can easily be changed so you're seeing still the sensors that are used to uh, to perceive the environment now the way these agents see or view the world depends still just like the model based agents on the state which state keeps on changing depending on the new uh, the new percepts the agent will receive through the sensors so the way this agent still looks at the world keeps uh, the world will keep on evolving and the agent will see the world differently but now this time the actions each action the agent takes will lead or will make it closer to a goal these agents the goal based agents have a particular goal that they need to achieve so each decision it has preferences to choose a better decision which decision will lead it closer or will reduce the distance from the goal so here we are saying what it will be like if i do action a so before it takes an action it should ensure that that action will reduce its distance from its goal that's why they are called goal based agents so the goals are given to that agent and now it will do it will uh, it will do something or it will choose an action to do basing on the goals that are given to it and as you have still uh, as we have been saying it will use the actuators uh, to act upon the environment so that's the goal based agent then we have what we call utility based agents okay these are agents which are developed having their end used as building blocks 
Okay, so we are saying these agents, they have their end used as building blocks. When there are multiple possible alternatives, then to decide which one is best, utility-based agents are better and they are used. So when you have multiple possible alternatives, you want to decide which alternative is the best, it's better to use the utility-based agents because these agents will choose actions based on a preference, based on the utility, based on the best uh, the best option for each state. Sometimes achieving the desired goal is not enough. Yeah, you can achieve a desired goal, just you can use the goal-based agent to achieve a desired goal, but just uh, achieving a desired goal is not enough. There may be a better option, a quicker, a safer, or a cheaper way to achieve it, to reach the destination. Now that's what the utility-based agents look at. They look at the cheaper, the quicker, the safer trip to reach the destination. In other words, they take note of the agent happiness. So agent happiness should be taken into consideration for uh, that's what the utility-based agents do. In other words, they describe how happy the agent is, not just reaching the goal, but how happy, how quick, how safer, how cheaper the trip to reach the destination. Now, because of the uncertainty in the world, a utility agent chooses the action that maximizes the expected utility. A utility function maps a state onto a real number which describes the associated degree of happiness so that's how they can know which uh, action uh, is better which action makes the agent more happy and the happiness of the agent we are looking at how quicker how safer how cheaper it is for an agent to reach its destination not just achieving a goal as for the goal-based agent, but still the utility, the preference is taken note of. So you're saying sensors, I have already explained these, even the, the goal-based agent has this, I've already explained this, but now we have not just a goal, but a utility, the best option how happy I will be in such a state, then basing, the best, uh, basing on the best preference that is chosen, the agent will take an action using the actuators to act upon its environment. So the last uh, type of agent that we are gonna look at is called a learning agent. A learning agent in AI is the type of agent which can learn from its past experiences or it has learning capabilities. Now the learning agent starts to act with basic knowledge, just basic knowledge, and then it is able to act and adapt automatically through learning. So with time, it keeps on learning and as it learns, it will act and adapt automatically. This learning agent has mainly four conceptual components and these are, it has the learning element. This learning element is responsible for making improvements by learning from the environment. And then another, op another component is called the critique. This component uh, takes feedback from critique and this describes how well the agent, it describes how well the agent is doing with respect to a fixed performance 
standard. So there is a performance standard that is fixed and then the agent receives critiques through the sensors and the sensors, of course, as you have been saying, they perceive the environment. So these are the percepts that are received by the sensors and then these critics are gauged or they are compared to this performance standard. Now, another component is the performance element. This component is responsible for suggesting actions that will lead to a new and informative... No, no? Sorry. The performance element is responsible for selecting are for selecting an external action and another component is called the problem generator this component is responsible for suggesting actions that will lead to new and informative experiences so when the learning agent receives critics it will give feedback to the learning element. And now when this learning element gets the feedback, because it learns, it will feed the learning goals to the problem generator component. Now this problem generator component, as you have said, it will suggest actions that will lead to new and informative experiences. So it will suggest actions or the experiments to the performance element. And this still learning element will make changes. And these changes will be, uh, will be fed to the performance element. And this performance element still can give knowledge to the learning element. Now after all this, that's when this performance element through uh, will feed the effectors or the actuators and then actions can be performed upon the environment. So this kind of agent is very, very good because for it, it begins with the basic knowledge. After time, it keeps on adapting, it keeps on learning automatically. So it is very easy for it to uh, to act upon the environment in the best way possible to give the basic result or to advise uh, in to advise the uh, in the best way possible because it learns it doesn't just give anything but with time just like a human being when you go through a certain experience the next time you go through the same, you already have knowledge, you have learned to adapt and now you can easily uh, do all, you can easily make the right choice there and then. So that's the beauty with this learning agent. Okay, friends, this marks the end of our topic about uh, AI agents. Let me still leave you with this interesting quote from this gentleman called Eliezer Yudkowski. He says, by far the greatest danger of artificial intelligence is that people conclude too early that they understand it. Friends, don't conclude too early. Subscribe to my channel learn more about artificial intelligence in the next videos. God bless you.